28th. Really excited to have everyone here. Uh, first, before we proceed forward, um, I'd like to recognize as Sprawshaw acknowledges the unceded territory of the Kwantlen, Musqueam, and Kekwat nations on whose land we live and work. Uh, I think it's a very important in today's time and date and age that we recognize um, those that we have um, are standing with at this time. Um, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Robert Thornton. I'm the director of the New Westminster Campus. Uh, our New Westminster Campus uh, is seen as the hub of business as we offer all of the business programs. I've been with the company for eight years. Uh, feels a lot longer than that, but um, what I am as the campus director uh, in charge of obviously uh, all of the programs and specifically with our business program, um, we've got one of our lead business instructors for our bookkeeping program, as well as a member of the New Westminster campus, Sunny. Sunny, if you can just introduce yourself to our panel, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Sunny Propagar. You can call me Sunny. I work with uh, uh, Robert here in the New Westminster campus. As he said, I take care of the business programs, especially we focus on, uh, I focus on uh, the accounting as well as advanced accounting courses. That's what I do. I've been teaching for ever, I think for a very, very long time, actually. And um, well, worked uh, you know, in the business world for about 30 years. So um, that's what I am. Excellent, thank you, Sunny. Oscar, if you can introduce yourself to our audience, please. Hi, everybody. My name's Oscar, and I am the business instructor here at the Kelowna campus. So hello to everybody from the Okanagan. And um, I've been teaching for, I'd say, about 10, 11 years uh, in the past uh, two, over two years uh, here at Sprott Shaw. Um, I recently completed my MBA. And, um, <clears throat> and yeah, more, more, more than happy to be here and share um, the Sprott Shaw experience with everybody. Excellent. Thank you, Oscar. Chelsea Smith, please introduce yourself to the audience. Thank you, Robert. Hi, I'm Chelsea Smith. I graduated from Maple Ridge campus with business admin sales and digital marketing program. And I'm actually currently upgrading to do the full business admin management program now. Excellent. Uh, Danielle Carson. Hi, thanks, Rob. Uh, my name is Danielle Carson. I graduated from the New Westminster campus about five years ago. Um, I currently have the pleasure of working with the um, Sprottshaw College team at the head office. I am the assistant to the director of nursing compliance and curriculum. And I did take the executive office administrator program with practicum. Excellent. Thank you. Amber. Hi there. Uh, I'm happy to be here today. Uh, my name's Amber and I'm in the bookkeeping administrative program at the Maple Ridge campus. And I'm just about done my program and very excited. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, and Chantel. Thanks, Robert. Uh, my name is Chantel Andres. And I'm taking the business administration and bookkeeping course. I'll be finishing up in about two weeks, not even, but a week and a half. And it's been a great experience so far, part of the Nanaimo campus. Excellent. Uh, as you guys can see, we've got a, a, a good range of, uh, of individuals, you know, current teachers uh, and those that are working with us. Um, before we go into the main area of focus of, of our business program, we want to really mention just a quick overview of the history of Sprashaw College. You know, we have been around for since 1903. Currently, we have 16 campuses. Um, you know, we have got a number of alumni. One that comes to mind is Emily Carr. Um, some of our first campuses started in Victoria as well as downtown Vancouver. Uh, we have a deep history uh, in the community of British Columbia. And we are excited to uh, obviously this opportunity to share um, one area of Sprawshaw College and this being the business program. There is a number of advantages that Sprawshaw offers. One is monthly starts, meaning we have intakes on a four week basis. Uh, no, you will not be starting during Christmas time or on Christmas day. So please keep that in mind. That's often a, a common question. We have a, over 130 programs, uh, and these programs range everywhere from health sciences 
business, of course, to legal administration, dental, healthcare, um, veterinarian assistant. Uh, with the breadth of programs that we have, Sprashaw College is definitely a, uh, a cornerstone college in the private college sector here in British Columbia. We have an employment service specialist, which is dedicated in each campus. This individual's role is important in terms of guiding graduates and potential graduates like Amber and Chantel are right now uh, into the job market. One thing that Sprotshaw cannot promise is a job, but what we absolutely can promise is getting you an interview. So our employment service specialist definitely works at the back end of your program with not only placing you in a practicum, but also um, providing a good touchback once you all graduate from your program and at which point we offer that continued support lifetime for any alumni that graduates from Sprott Shaw. We have lifetime refreshers for courses that you take and that job support, as I just mentioned, which is a very critical component and, uh, and one of the major advantages that Sprott Shaw offers. Okay, so let's introduce the main area of our focus right now. In the field of business, you need a solid foundation. And that solid foundation, we can offer. We offer business programs that focus on fundamentals of business. We offer programs that deal in management, digital marketing, payroll, and bookkeeping. What I wanna do right now is provide an overview of the areas to which we're gonna be discussing inside our webinar right now. In this particular order, we will be covering these focuses and areas of concentration. Business writing, career development, accounting, digital marketing, traditional marketing, sales, leadership, and what we like to call, uh, call upper level accounting courses. So focusing on area number one, which is our business writing courses. Some of these courses that we offer focus really on how to write appropriate business letters. This is an important area that we need to focus on. As business students, it's important that we communicate in a very succinct, professional uh, manner, which allows the receiver of the information to understand clearly what's being requested. We want to be able to write to certain audiences. The business uh, writing courses provide guidance on how to structure letters and how to ensure the appropriate letterheads, things of that nature are placed in terms of, uh, of these particular courses. One of the things that I'd like to ask Sonny and Oscar, either or, in terms of the particular courses that you've taught, such as general education 111, general education 112, what are your thoughts in terms of some of the strengths that you can pull from there? Oscar? <clears throat> well, I would say that um, the probably the first and foremost strength that uh, we we like to teach our students and, and particularly when it comes to business communication and business writing is how central communication is in today's organizations. Um, I always like to use uh, the following example with my students. Imagine that you draft a memo for Jeff Bezos and you don't check the grammar okay so you're in trouble yeah so definitely we we have to focus in in very we it, they're very small things like grammar spelling and that sort of things but they're so central to the business writing and <clears throat> um usually these uh these courses are actually very fun and entertaining because we not just focus on what some textbook says about business writing, but we put it we put it into practice as well. Okay, we have the students uh, create memos, create business letters, um, create uh, small business reports. I mean, the core business documents that you're going to encounter in your professional lives, and we show you how to do it. So that way you're you're well prepared. Okay, and that way I mean Jeff Bezos is gonna be happy with your memo. 
<laughs> Excellent. Sunny, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, to add to that, like, I mean, um, one thing Oscar said is very true. Try to make it fun. If you if if you can make learning fun, then probably you're going to you're going to get involved a lot in it. And we also do the practicality of it in the sense that you know it's not just oral com uh, written communication. We are talking about. We are also talking about oral communication. How do you communicate with your bosses? How do you perform when you have a panel interview. So what we also do is kind of when these students do these, you know, most of the projects they do um, or the assignments they do, we ask them not only to write the assignment, but also to present it in class, in front of the class and let the students have fun, let them ask questions, let you face that. So that kind of gives a practical uh, experience. Excellent, excellent. You know, let's get some uh, comments from our current students. Amber, what are your thoughts? in terms of our business writing courses? Wow, uh, Robert, I learned so much in the business writing and the critical communication course. Um, I realized I needed to touch up on my grammar, but um, learning those things, the, the, the letters, the memos, making all those reports, doing those PowerPoint presentations and speaking in front of the class really gave me the confidence that I need moving forward in my career. Perfect. Chantel, anything to add to that? Yeah, I d agree with Amber. Absolutely. I think both courses um, absolutely brought my communication level to that next professional state that I would want for applying for jobs and being able to communicate in a professional, respected way with the types of businesses I want to work at. Um, working in bookkeeping, you can work anywhere from an accounting office to, you know, a construction job where your level of communication is going to be different. And th that course absolutely helped facilitate that. Excellent. Well, we know that Chelsea and Danielle uh, did well in their writing because they landed a job. <laughs> Danielle, uh, any thoughts on reflecting back now how that uh, how our business writing courses uh, provided that structure and support for you? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Kind of what Amber and Chantel both touched upon. And one of the things that I learned is, again, I need to touch up on my grammar and I needed to kind of present myself in more of a professional manner because a lot of the times within our company, we are familiar with each other, but we also do chat with people on and outside of a third party. And the first um, kind of look that they get at you or the first sense that they get at you in your professionalism is the email. So they don't actually see you face to face. Um, again, with COVID, it taught us that we don't really see each other every single day. We don't really communicate with everybody every single day. But your email is basically your first look at how you how professional you are. So definitely going through my program, I learned how to actually articulate myself well in an email that's straight to the point. It's blunt, but also professional. Yeah, excellent. And I've received a couple of those emails as well <laughs> from you. <laughs> Chelsea, anything to add? So I think it's a great thing that we cover grammars, especially in emails professionally, because nowadays we all are on Facebook or texting each other. So we all forget the importance of being professional because we're all so short and brief. It just re reminds us how to talk as professionals nowadays, which we all seem to forget. Yeah, excellent. Um, one of the things that when I introduced the overview, I mentioned that we have career development courses inside our business programs. You know, these career development um, courses really focus on resume building and cover letters and the importance of, as Chelsea said, and Danielle, that you got a one shot opportunity to make a first impression. Um, in terms of the delivery of these particular courses, such as general education 124, as well as customer service GE or general education 125. Uh, Sunny, can you speak to how, how the delivery of those particular business uh, courses occur? Resume writing as well as, uh, you know, the, the career development course, it's, it's not limited to resume writing and attending interviews, you know, um, we also ask the students to make a list of their potential employees, how to go about looking at potential, finding potential employees. Mm -hmm. Do you simply sit and do internet search or do you do networking? So there are ways of doing it. And then there is this whole thing called the hidden job market, right? Where they say 
that only 20% of the jobs are advertised. And by the time the advertisement comes out, it's too late because there are, there are so many contestants that you're going, to, you're going to fight with. Whereas if you're looking at the hidden job market, how do you develop that networking? So those are all the things. So it's a very hands-on practical kind of thing that we do. Excellent. And also how to write reference letters and how to ask for reference letters. And by the end of the course, these are all the documents that you should you know, produce, including a list of potential employers and things like that. Excellent. You know, Chantel, why don't you uh, interject there in terms of being a week and a half away, already have taken GE124 as well as GE125. What are your thoughts? Was this a course that was able to help you? Absolutely. I actually utilized my cover letter and resume that I created in that course for my applications. Um, tweaked my cover letter, of course, to be more applicable to each job I applied at. But I used the basis of both and I ended up being able to land more interviews this time around than I did before I went to school. I had a couple months there off of work beforehand and I landed the interviews I wanted, um, not just ones I felt I had to settle for because I didn't have the education or the talent to write the resume and cover letter. And it was very helpful, as well as the practicality of actually doing it in class. Um, the mock interview was fantastic. It was great to be able to do that and know where my downfalls were and where my good points were. So it was very helpful. Excellent. Oscar, in terms of the mock interviews that Chantel just uh, added, What's the experience from you, the instructor's perspective? And then talk to us about how you, you see the light bulb come on when students recognize, oh, I shouldn't have given my age because that's a faux pas. And we, in our business courses, especially this particular course, we condition some of the, uh, the red flags that um, you, may, you may experience when looking uh, at jobs that potential employers may, um, may be giving you. What are your thoughts on that? Well, actually, the mock interviews are an excellent component for GE124. Um, I had the opportunity to to be the uh, mock interviewer for 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 a class, and they were really nervous because I, I was in, in in I mean, I dressed up, I, I suited a, a tie and everything, and um, I was very serious. My 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 face was like, oh, I, I haven't seen you before. So just sit here and let's do the interview. And they were they were really nervous, but I helped them um, see beyond that and, and and for them to be able to prepare for the for the actual interview. And it's it's a really good opportunity for the students as well for to see or what to expect when they're actually sitting in front of an interviewer. Because one of the things that we we let them know is that not all the time are they going to be um, in an inter interview with a single person. I mean, there's pa panel interviews as well, so they gotta be prepared for that. And and that, like as Sunny said, that always starts with resume building, having a good cover letter, and um, having your references in place. So everything is everything uh, that is central to to an interview is. Um, is taken care of in, in that particular course. Excellent. Chelsea, and then, you, and, and, sorry. Yeah, of and, course, Sonny. Then, um, I'm sorry, uh, to, to add to what Oscar said, also this, there are certain standard questions that every interview asks, every interviewer asks, right? So those are all the questions that you should be ready with. So those are all the things that we take care of, plus the elevator pitch, you know, how would you introduce within 30 seconds or one minute? And that's what they expect you. Usually that's the first question. And I've seen most of the time students fumble there. Well, I have my whole life behind me. How will I condense it in 30 seconds, right? So those are things that we ask them to practice. And then what are your weaknesses? You know, there are lots of those questions that are very tricky to answer. So you get experience in that. Yeah, excellent. You know, what I wanted to, to just ask Chelsea, um, you know, you, you obviously had to get the interview in order to get your job. Um, how did the uh, career development courses help you in that regard? So I found it very helpful, first of all, because we also take a Microsoft Office program. So that helped me build my resume to stand out more because I'm more creative niche. So my resume was not just black and white. So I was able to bring elements from that as well as in the interview 
it gave me that opportunity because I've never actually had a panel interview to have that understanding of how to look at each person individually and address them properly while building that confidence to build, like Sunny said, answering those questions of who are you in 30 seconds because everyone feels it's they're asking about your life and you want to talk about your dog and everything, but really it's actually a job professional program. So I found it quite very helpful on getting a good running base for my interviews and landing a job. Excellent. Excellent. You guys, I want to now steer the conversation to our accounting courses and, you know, Everyone here uh, obviously loves the uh, the first day of accounting when you, you stepped into accounting and you're like, why are my textbooks so big? And what is this other book that has all these blank things? Yeah, uh, as Chantel is pointing in the background, those are the accounting textbooks. <laughs> One thing that uh, our college really prides ourselves on in terms of our business is ensuring that there is a very strong accounting component in the business programs. One of the things that we recognize, irrespective if you want to become an accountant or not, it is so important to understand how a business functions in terms of how it makes money and why you as an employee need to add value quantitatively to the bottom line. You know, it's important to understand how the money flows through a company. And when you have that type of foundation that you're going to derive from our business programs, you're going to be able to be able and understand clearly about objectives, strategies of the company, and why those are in place. Oscar, as an instructor for AC112, and I'll get to you, Sonny, as the lead instructor for our bookkeeping program, but Oscar, give us your thoughts on what that experience is on the very first day when the students walk in and they're like, oh, I don't like numbers. I don't like numbers. <laughs> and you know, it's all about processes. It's not about numbers. What are your thoughts, Oscar? Yeah, I've had my fair share of, uh, of those. But I always start with the following um, story back from my native Mexico when I first started teaching about 10 years ago. And it was in high school. I started teaching to high schoolers accounting. And one of them came up and said, why do I even need to learn accounting if I'm going to be a, a registered massage therapist? And everyone needs to learn accounting. Okay, it doesn't matter what field you are. It doesn't matter if you're going to open um, a food and beverage business or you're going to open a restaurant, you're going to open a clinic. Um, you need an accounting system in place because you need to manage the money, the financial resources of your organization. Otherwise, okay, you're not going to post a profit okay, because that's what every business is looking for, to post a profit. Okay. You're, you're, not gonna, you're not in there to lose money. So that's what I, what I teach my students from day one. And I show them the, uh, the importance okay, of having a good accounting system in place. And like you said, Robert, okay, it doesn't mean that all of us have to be accountants in the future, but at least we, uh, we need to know basic bookkeeping, at least, okay? debits, credits, identify the financial statements, Right? The most important ones. What's a balance sheet? What goes into a balance sheet? Okay. What's the uh, uh, the statement of changes in equity? What is equity in the first place? So all of that we teach our students from day one, and we show them the importance. Okay. So after they do their AC one one two, and hopefully in the end they end up loving it instead of hating it. Okay. <laughs> but they they have that those basics, and especially those students that are still in the bookkeeping uh, in the bookkeeping program. Okay, so at least when they go uh, right to Sunny, well, I mean, they have the, uh, the basics and that way they continue to learn um, um, the more advanced accounting stuff. And so before we get to Sunny, because I, I know Sunny's itching on this, <laughs> I want to I give the opportunity for Amber to talk about it because uh, Amber and Chantel, we'll go Amber and then you, Chantel, and then we're going to hit Sunny because yeah. uh, I, I'd love to hear the student's perspective is first before we go to the guru himself of our bookkeeping program. Amber, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, when I finally got to the that first accounting course, AC112, I was very thrilled because I had already done all the business writing and all those other courses. 
And um, I really thought the program was really a good base line, um, even for the other people who weren't in accounting, but for all the for all the different um, programs. And I thought it was really good. Um, I did really well. Um, and I think it was, you really need to focus in and get a good foundation, especially if you're moving forward, because a lot of these advanced courses, um, they really build on that one, that one solid foundation of that first course. Yeah, you and got I, that. I also, sorry, I also want to say that um, if you, if you are in that program and you can kind of make a, like a group where you can help each other. Um, I helped several people in my class, and it also helped uh, solidify my understanding of all the concepts and everything. Yeah, you got it. Chantel, you're nodding your head there, and, and I agree, right, Amber? If you can teach, you have essentially started to master, right? Chantel, what are your thoughts in terms of our uh, fundamentals in accounting, even speaking to our uh, computerized accounting with Sage? What are your thoughts? To, my thoughts at first was terrifying. It was, yeah, big book. That was scary, but it really did teach me the fundamentals. I have some background with um, just preparing reconciliations for the end of the month and helping, you know, our accounting team do um, their month end process and year end process. But being able to put the pieces together, I never really could. You know, I, I would do things and it was, you know, where does it go from here? And that course really taught me that background. It, it taught me the fundamentals of it. It gave me a foundation on where to start and really gave me an idea of what kind of bookkeeping do I want to do, right? Do I want to work, you know, in a tax office? Do I want to work doing payables and receivables? So it, it was a really good course it was hard but it was really good and working with a group or people absolutely helpful and definitely encouraged which was great um the instructors always encouraged being able to find a friend or find a group to be able to work together and being able to do that will absolutely increase your chances of doing well in the course excellent and without further ado the guru himself, the lead uh, bookkeeping I think instructor. <laughs> most of these people have said what I had to say. <laughs> you know what, Sonny, if, if you not only can you just briefly touch on, on, on the importance of fundamentals, but then make that bridge into the upper level accounting courses and why that's so exactly, important. Exactly, exactly. And then so, give, me, give us an idea of what that struggle looks like when you know that students haven't really focused on the fundamentals before embarking into those upper level what are your thoughts that's what i tell them like when they before they come to my class you know i write to them asking them to brush up on ac 112 with oscar right if you've done that with oscar if you if, if you know or if you've done it with me you know please brush up on those things because that's one elaborate good course which gives you a solid foundation right and um and when people come to the class like you know i was thinking when when oscar was mentioning about the fear you know people express you know, yeah, I don't like I don't like math. I don't know math, so I don't want accounting. So usually, you know, we used to say like, this is not trigonometry. This is not your high school math, right? In accounting, what kind of math are you using? Multiplication, you you adding, subtracting. What else? Like you know, so it's not a lot of math, but it's processes. It's it's kind of understanding the logic behind those processes. That's one thing I address. Why why I'm talking about this today is because a lot of students who come to the class even after even after doing the basics they come back to to advanced classes they mention about this fear okay and then the other question also like as you in every position you need accounting not only that the day you get promoted you you are doing more accounting and less of your original work the the upper you go the the more accounting more numbers you're dealing with right the ceo is the one probably is dealing with every numbers of the company right so that's the other importance of of, of, of the accounting and i get the same question when students come and say why should i do you know, you know percent values why should i do budgeting why should i do these kind of advanced courses here i'm just i just want to be a bookkeeper where you know i'll be entering data no like the you will get promoted right you're not going to be at that level forever so you need to you need to learn these advanced things which will stand you in in good stead in when you go to the industry and especially when your bosses find that you know more than what you're doing then you have better chances of getting you know promotions and increments and all those kind of things and then this point of uh, you know allowing students to help each other is one thing we kind of religiously do because 
you know, from experience as well as from theoretical knowledge, we know that students are more receptive, you know, receptive to other students. When, when students and students talk, they not only teach better, they also learn better. You know, I used to joke in class, hey, Chantel, I'll give you half my salary, you know. <laughs> so, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when the students, the students interact, when they have fun, they do better. And then the other thing that we do in uh, accounting is not simply give you only accounting. Um, this is this is another resistance I face from, you know, some of the students at times. Like, why should you teach us taxes? Why should you teach us payroll? Right? There's a payroll course these people have done, and there's a tax course they are doing, and, and they say, "Wow, tax is tough." And yeah, this is basic taxes. You know, you need to know this because when you're working in an accounting position, it's not that you're not wearing blinders like this. You will have to deal with people from tax department, and not only that, as Chantel said, it it gives an idea about what's your. Oh yeah, I like I like taxes very much. I've had students who loved taxes and who wanted to move into taxes because they like that. And some other students will say that's weird, like nobody likes taxes. You know? so when you get exposed to certain um, uh, other subjects too, that's really good. And when you get exposed to advanced courses, that's also really good. And um, I can tell you one thing, accounting course, uh, our accounting course is pretty intense. Okay, it's the, the, These courses all together, I think add up to how much, uh, uh, 16 weeks. 16 yes. or 18, I don't know how yep, many weeks. 16 weeks. It's 16 weeks. So that's 16 weeks. Is about 16 four. weeks on top of the fundamentals. On right? top of the fundamentals. So, yeah. 16 and, weeks I'll, and I'll speak to that as soon as you're done. There. Yeah. So that's that's pretty good. You know? yeah. But but I can tell you one thing. In accounting, um, because of that, when you go to the workplace, you're confident. You know a lot. You feel that confidence. Okay. And, um, you know, accounting is a field where because of this fear for accounting, not many people want to get into accounting. If you did accounting, you know, getting a job, according to me, like I will only talk talk for accounting, right? Uh, it's way easier to get a job if you're an accountant here. That's that's my feeling, actually. Excellent. So, and so, guys, before we make the transition into the next area of focus, I just want to make sure that the audience understands there's there's two avenues here. Both avenues are underpinned with what we call our fundamental accounting courses. And there's two of them. The fundamental accounting courses are accounting 112 and accounting 214. In all business programs, if you want to continue on into higher level accounting or payroll, you are required to take the accounting 112 and accounting 214. Accounting 214 takes as your knowledge and breadth of understanding and now applies it into a computerized accounting system which takes you through different areas of the company's uh, business cycles. Once you complete those two particular programs, you can then, it's a segue and a prerequisite into the bookkeeping program avenue, which is led by Sunny, and into our payroll program, which is led by uh, an instructor with the New West Campus, Barbara Lykar. Unfortunately, she was unable to make it to today. And if you have any questions in regards to the CPA program, Chelsea Smith will be able to take any of those questions after the webinar and be able to direct you accordingly. One of the things I would, would want to mention right now about the CPA program is that it is a registered program with the CPA. And we are not the ones that write the curriculum. We are the ones that deliver the curriculum. The final exams and assignments and quizzes are derived from the CPA program outside of the college. We act as an intermediary to deliver that type of program for any of the students that want to get into the payroll area. The third area of focus that I want to ch turn our attention to are the relationship programs and the management programs, uh, courses that we have actually, sorry, the relationship courses and the management courses. Danielle, as somebody who is in constant discussions with various people in the organization, talk to me about how the managerial leadership courses uh, provided a good structure and, and support in terms of the position that you hold right now with the, with the college. 
Well, again, it kind of goes way back to just the basics and business writing. And again, just how you present yourself with customer service and that first impression that you give people. So on a daily basis, I basically touch base with everybody in the, uh, the company, um, outside third party, and all of the courses that I took throughout my program with like customer service and again, marketing and basically everything that I took as, as well as HR as well. I built connections outside and I learned how to actually get my foot in the door with a certain company. And I learned how to bring the things that I learned inside Sprout Shop with my schooling. And I took those every, every single day I use them when I chat with people outside in third party businesses and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of hard to explain because not a lot of people know exactly what I do in a sense. Um, but <laughs> what do you I do, t- Danielle? <laughs> <laughs> but basically everything that I learned, I actually took accounting as well. So I use accounting part of my job as well. So um, I'm probably, again, it's a hard job. I work for the director of nursing, but with those relationships that I built and stuff, um, and all of the aspects that I learned of my program, I took them into the job that I do now. And it's hard to explain exactly what I do, um, but somebody else may be better to articulate it just because it's hard to explain what I actually do. So, Well, let's get a perspective of the, the managerial leadership courses from Oscar. Oscar, when you're delivering these types of uh, courses, what what's a realistic perspective that a student can get and what are they trying to really uh, achieve from from taking a course like that well number one uh first they need to start with mg111 which is the management principles and but this is a very interesting course because it's not just management theory i mean yes we dive into um some of the um, different management theories that have evolved all across um all throughout history up to the modern world but i also show my students what modern organizations are doing nowadays nowadays okay so why is google uh why is google google in the first place okay so how did elon musk uh turn tesla into the company that it is uh starting to be today and um, it's not just about the uh, the principles in theory, but it's also about the principles in practice. Okay, taking a look at the different levels of an organization. Um, we mentioned at the, at the start of the webinar, uh, business communication, business writing. Okay, so okay, so now how does that translate into the entire organization? How does the communication flow within an organizational chart? So that's some of the things that we take a look in MG111, and then immediately after, we, tr- uh, we go into MG112, which is leadership management. Okay, so the next phase of the, of, of the management cycle, which is leadership. Okay, so what's leadership in the first place? Okay, from a management perspective, what's the difference between a leader and a manager? Because it's not the same thing. Okay, a manager is not necessarily a leader. Okay, they have to, they need to have different, uh, uh, certain characteristics, a certain personality, okay, but everyone can become a, a good leader. And this is a, a very interesting course because um, I, I show my students uh, where some of today's business leaders um, have come from, where did they start, and where they are right now. Okay, so you think, uh, you think Bill Gates uh, was rich from the, from the start? Of course not. Okay, so he started in a garage. Okay, same as Steve Jobs. Okay, look at where their companies are right now. But it was a process. So we, we analyze that process, okay, from start to finish. And hopefully the students can learn and, and, and see the importance of uh, management leadership in the first place and also how, how important it is in today's um, so competitive world because organi- companies are, are competing against each, each other for, for us. Okay. We are the consumers. We are the clients. So they know that they, they need to offer better products and better services. Okay. So that's everything that we analyze in those two courses. Excellent. Excellent. I want to just change the channel a, a little bit, still sticking with the management area of our business program, but I want to focus on one particular course that we have seen it as a cornerstone course in our business programs, similar to what our fundamentals in accounting is a cornerstone, a cornerstone rather, but our project management course. Sonny, can you speak to it briefly in terms of 
what project management really provides the student and, and where you see the strengths and weaknesses of students coming into the program and, and what students can expect. Yeah, this is, you know, as you said, it could be a misleading course in, in the sense that people will think that hey, I know project management, I've done projects, right? I've done a lot of, a lot of people have done a lot of projects. I did my science project, I did a lot of, what is project management after all? We are not talking about such small projects here. We are talking about huge projects, right? How do you manage, you know, uh, multi-people, multi-resources, that kind of big projects. And it, that itself is, you know, Oscar, Oscar will probably know a lot more than me in this, uh, four four weeks right it's a four weeks course and you will start from the beginning uh, of how to you know track the uh, uh, project how to allocate resources how to make sure that you are you know the critical path and all those kind of things these are the you know methods that advanced companies like google's and uh, the uh, and the facebook's and they are using today because nowadays in the business world it's not routine work anymore. It's not that companies are just, okay, we have been around for 100 years. We'll be around for 100 more years. We are growing only 2% a year. That's not what's happening today. Today, companies are exploding you know, with growth, explosive growth. And how does that happen? New projects, new projects all the time. So right from launching a pro, you know, making a building is a project, launching a new product is a project, changing you know, corporate re-engineering is a project. So those are all the things that needs projects. Now, today's manager needs a lot of project management. You might think that I'm not a project manager, all right? Yeah, but you know what? You're a sales manager, you're doing a project. You're an account manager, you're doing a project. Everybody needs to know project management. Excellent, excellent. In this area of focus of our webinar, I said that we're talking about the relationship courses, the management courses. One focus that we have in our business program is in sales as well. Chelsea, can you speak to, as somebody who works in our marketing department, and it's a great segue into the area, the fourth area of focus, but speak to what that sales and strategy course um, really provided for you. So it provided confidence because you get to learn about style flexing, which is adapting to selling to different people because everybody has different needs. So if you have only one type of selling style, you're not going to hit them the same way as another person. So it's really learning how to be creative and adapt in the selling, which helps build your confidence because to sell, it's not always an easy job, but you have to be able to be confident so the trust is built there, which goes back again to business communication is how to talk appropriately and professional with your clientele at all times. Excellent, excellent. Guys, I wanna now turn to the fourth area of focus in our discussion today, and it covers our digital marketing courses. The digital marketing, as everyone is fully aware, is such an important element of today's world. You know, Oscar and Sunny have both alluded to, you know, Facebook, Amazon, Google. One of the things that our college has been able to create is four courses that allow students a good breadth and scope of understanding. We first start with what is digital marketing. We move into different social media platforms, you know, how to utilize these platforms. Then we go into website development. From website development, we then steer the students into the last course, which talks about search engine optimization and web analytics, and how to utilize those two elements in creating a strong website, which will then market your products or services. Danielle. Can you give us your thoughts, although it's been some time and the, you know, the course content has slightly changed, but the real under, underlying theme of the four courses hasn't changed much. We've just adapted to what's new in the marketplace. What are your thoughts and how does that, how did that provide um, support in terms of uh, your placement in the company right now? Uh, I actually love marketing. So again, it's been about five years since I took the program and I didn't take all of marketing. So I had just kind of little snippets of it with my program, but I 
found so much that I enjoyed about marketing that pertains to my job as well. And again, it comes back to social media marketing is huge in this day and age. And it is one of those untapped resources that people are now tapping into. And it does come back with the hidden job market that as when you network yourself, you have to be professional at all times, because these are the people that you're going to meet along the way. And although it's social media marketing, people think that it's just one type of marketing with a product or um, the company, you're actually marketing yourself in a way that looks um, professional, the way you present yourself. So I deal with a whole bunch of people from different third-party resources all the time. And I actually have to market myself and the company all the time to look professional. This is what we do. And with the courses that I took with marketing, I had no idea that social media was a hidden untapped resource for marketing and all these things. Um, for me personally, I loved marketing. I found so many different ways to actually look things up and how to search things properly and how to look for jobs and everything. But with my position in the company, we actually use um, like ProQuest. So we actually have a certain thing that is different from Google where we actually search articles and journals that are vetted by everybody. Um, but the things that I learned in marketing, I definitely bring them into my side as well. And I do actually help out at head office with the marketing department sometimes as well. So having that background knowledge, although I didn't take the full um, four courses of marketing, but having that background knowledge, I am definitely a key asset at head office um, because I know how to actually use those marketing resources as well in terms of my job and how to um, professionally market myself too as well. Perfect. Uh, Sunny, Anything to add in, you know, uh, when you're, you're teaching these particular string of courses, uh, what, what can students expect in terms of these particular four courses? Oh, you're muted. Hey, sorry. The funny thing about digital marketing is a lot of people don't realize its importance. You know, 10 years ago, you know, um, well, not 10 years, 10, 12 years ago when I was, it was 10, 12 years ago. At that time, you know, some of my clients, they never realize the importance of digital marketing at all. We do marketing the traditional way and that is it. And then of course, time has moved on and as time passes, the percentage share of digital marketing is per journey, way more than the traditional marketing. So there is no way you can, you can you know, um, ignore it. And one thing I tell my students every time in class is be the evangelist. It's very likely that when you get into a company, the company doesn't really realize the importance of digital marketing. And the other thing about digital marketing is most of the people in the industry are people who have come from traditional marketing because those days there was no course on digital marketing. And even now, a lot of people don't give a lot of importance to learning digital marketing. They say, yeah, this is same like traditional marketing. Yeah, it is same. It, traditional marketing and digital marketing are the same. Traditional marketing and digital marketing are different, right? So there is a lot of elements that are common. So you come with only one part of it, you're not going to be very successful. You're kind of a little digitally illiterate. Whereas when you're sitting in a classroom and then you're actually studying it, actually making your website, actually selling your, you know, actually the, the project that we do, that's something which, which uh, probably we didn't touch upon. Like even in those earlier courses, we make them do projects. Okay, show us your uh, website, show us your uh, maybe imaginary product, but then where do you advertise it, right? We, uh, you know, how much, uh, how much will you, uh, may, give us your, you know, imaginary budget. How much will you spend on, on, on uh, Google advertisement, which are all the social media that is relevant to your business. So you do that and then, uh, and then you learn that, so. That's how, so it's kind of on one side, it's creating that awareness on the other side, it's kind of opening the door to the, the whole digital world. A lot of students who, yeah, I sit on Facebook all the time. I know everything. You come to the class and you realize, hey, I know what I know is only so, so little, right? What is affiliate marketing? Do you know? I don't know what is affiliate marketing. You know what? That can make you a million dollars, right? So there are a lot of these kind of little, little things that people don't know which are extremely important. Yeah, and yeah. then, yeah, so uh, when, you, when you learn it systematically, you become good at it. Yeah, excellent. Oscar, anything to add? You know, one of the first things that the students learn uh, the moment that they take MK151, which is the digital marketing fundamentals, is that digital marketing is not about having just a website. It's not just about tweeting. And it definitely, it's not just about posting something on Facebook. So they what? take a look are at- you, Are you being serious? <laughs> it is what it is, my friend. 
<laughs> so it, it's more than that. So and they actually learn the importance that analytics is um, the role that analytics is is having in the entire digital marketing world. Because yeah, you post something on Facebook, but how many people are gonna see that post? How many people are gonna actually going to if you you have a link, okay? If you have a hashtag, okay? How many people are gonna pay attention to that, okay? Because a lot of people just bypass it, okay? So it's just some annoying ad that it's popping up on their Facebook feed. Okay, how you draw that? Uh, how do you draw their attention? Okay, how do you use Twitter to uh, to perform customer service nowadays? Okay, because uh, for some reason, companies are very quick at responding if you're tweeting uh, some negative negative stuff about them on Twitter. Because in one or two minutes, they're answering back. But on Facebook, sometimes they take 24 up to 48 hours to answer you. Okay, so why why is that happening? Okay, so all of that um, is something that that the students are are able to learn. Okay, and and as well as to develop their own strategies so that they can um, they can do uh, perform those in in the future in in whichever place they end up working at. Excellent, Chelsea. You're in the marketing department. Talk to us about how those courses provided a good structure and scaffolding in, your, in what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. What are your thoughts? So I think they're a very good foundation for anyone looking to get a scope of what digital marketing is because nowadays having a website is essentially your new business card. You tell people to go look at your website instead of handing out a business card, your website can hit people all the way overseas in a matter of seconds, which also goes then bridges into the digital marketing aspect where you learn about Facebook marketing, which I know everyone scrolls it every single day, probably way too much a day. And there's continuous ads. You scroll for like five seconds and guaranteed you'll find five new ads of those swimsuits you were talking to with your friends about when you went out for lunch, like Facebook, all our social media platforms nowadays have that access to scary enough, listen to you and read what you're doing and know how to market that appropriately. So it makes your job as a marketer much more like science, I feel, because you're actually watching the data in real life. You constantly can go refresh and see what's happening. Whereas in traditional marketing, if you put a radio ad, you're kind of hoping it'll hit a thousand people in that minute where you don't actually get that feedback if it's performing or not. So I find it's been very helpful to evolve in marketing and seeing the way it's presented, it's easy to understand, but you can go off and keep learning, if that makes sense. Like digital marketing is my niche. I love that. Like I keep constantly adapting and learning to it, but that's the marketplace. But understanding the basic is very helpful. And these courses definitely build that foundation so that no matter your role in a company, you understand the importance because I think even if you're doing accounting, that you're not necessarily seeing the marketing side, you're just seeing the dollars spent, but you know what it's happening behind the scenes at all times. Okay, perfect. You guys, we're coming to a close. And one of the things I just wanted just to, just to revisit is what we've talked about so far. We've talked about our business writing courses, career development courses inside our business program, of course. We talked about our accounting fundamental courses and the bridge into our bookkeeping, which are our upper level accounting courses and our payroll courses. We talked about sales courses that we offer. We talked about our leadership courses. And of course, we just finished talking about our digital marketing and our social media courses that we teach in website development. What I want to do before we get to a Q&A is just talk quickly to Amber and Chantel. These students are in what we call an outcome-based program. Outcome-based meaning you are studying a very specific niche, not just general business, to then get yourself into a particular industry. And in this case, it is in bookkeeping. Amber, 
in terms of the bookkeeping program that you are currently in and are slated to graduate successfully in, how's your experience? Talk to the audience in terms of that. Um, my, sorry, my experience has been um, overwhelming at times. Uh, I seem to go through uh, uh, like a, a trend. It's um, utter panic in the beginning of the course. Uh, overwhelming you feel like oh my god I'm drowning and then I go through uh, just a, like a breathing thing like to calm myself I, I bear down on the what, what we've got to learn and I just take it as it comes and I always end up with a very good mark at the end um, I put in a lot of work it is a lot of work I I have done they say one to three hours of homework a night. I sometimes do more. Um, I've really want to strive for success and I have been successful. And um, it's just been a really great experience. Um, I, I, I actually worked as a chef for a lot of years. Um, I'm a Red Seal chef and this is a change in a career for me. And I'm just really excited to be done. August 6th is my last day. Then I'm going to a practicum and I'm just really looking forward to um, getting that, that, that second dream job of my life. Excellent. Chantel, can you add anything? How was your experience? You're a week and a half away, so don't mess up on the final exam. <laughs> what was your experience like in the program? It's been really good. So a little bit of background for me. Um, I was laid off last year with COVID and it took a bit of time and started applying for jobs and really wasn't getting the responses from employers that I wanted. So it was like, okay, let's go to school. And I was a terrible student in high school, um, you know, especially math. Math I was no good at, but I did it counting 11 once and I was good at it. And it was like, okay, let's go back to school 20 years later. And it, it's been a bit of a trip, but it has been a really great experience. Um, the instructors have all been so supportive for every learning level we've had in every class. Um, you've got people that fly through things really fast, that grasp everything really quick. And you've got people that don't, that some of these people haven't been in school in 30 years and they're deciding to start a new career. And the instructors are amazing to be able to work with each of those students and support them in a way that is super helpful and doesn't leave anybody feeling like they're failing behind. Um, so yeah, the courses have been great. The instructors have been great. Um, I, I really couldn't rave about it more. Um, I'm trying to talk my girlfriend into going back to school right now because she's in the same boat and it's like, call Sprat job. Yeah, it worked. And yeah, it's it's been a really good experience. And really, I equate this course to me having a job now. Yeah, I think being able to put this and graduate in bookkeeping on my resume, that helped, that really mattered. And it didn't take me four years or cost me $30,000. So there's a value in that too. And that's a great segue into one, one of the areas that I wanted to just touch on before we get to the questions and answers. So audience, we really appreciate uh, your patience right now before we get to the Q&A. Chantel, talk to us about that the practicum experience and that you're about to go on and the job that you're landing, things of that nature. So in with my course, I didn't actually have a practicum opportunity, which I was okay with. Um, I'm fairly confident in my interviewing skills and such. So I was all right with that. And I'm a bit of a preparer and I figured it would take a few weeks to find a job. So I thought, okay, I'll start job hunting before I'm done. So that hopefully when I'm done, I can transition quickly into working because bills don't stop. Um, and it worked out. It really did. I started hunting probably about two, three weeks ago. I went for three interviews and the third one was the charm. And yeah, I think really that diploma on there and I put in my cover letter, you know, soon to graduate August 6th. So they knew I wasn't done yet. But with my grades so far, I was able to tell them what kind of percentage I was at for passing, which has been really good. And that helped. That landed the job. I really think it did because she said even with the resumes they'd received, they weren't really getting what they were wanting. They were getting people with an education as well as experience. So I had the experience. I just never had the piece of paper to go with it. And unfortunately, when you're applying for a job, you just have black and white writing. 
that's it. Um, everything is online now. There's no going into a store, shaking somebody's hand and giving them your resume and being able to give a first impression. So when you're competing with black and white writing, to be able to say you actually have a diploma to go with your experience, it spoke volumes, I think. Excellent. So guys, I just wanted a great segue into the last, uh, one of the last areas before we get to the Q&A is just practicum opportunities. So to our audience, I think it's very important to understand that the practicum opportunities that our college will provide, uh, we there has to be a certain level of expectation that we're not promising you that, for example, in bookkeeping practicum, that you're going to be doing uh, all of the bookkeeping with the chief financial officer. That's not the case. We have to keep in mind that oftentimes when a student goes into a practicum, that they're going to be exposed to very private and confidential information of the company. Depending upon the host, you're going to get different experiences in the practicum. What the practicum's uh, opportunities we provide the process is, is we sit down with you as a student, we look at the areas of focus in your business program, and we identify what your strengths and weaknesses, and of course, what you would like to do. From there, we then put out the net of our contacts and partnerships that we have, and we provide up to three options for students. If after the third option, the student chooses not to go on the particular practicum, then we will work synergistically with you in terms of getting the practicum placement, but we won't be the one that would be pioneering the practicum placement ahead. So I think that's really important. The practicum components are, are definitely into your entry level positions. Uh, but once again, it's all about wowing that particular host. And although we cannot promise you a job, what we can do is promise you the exposure into the industry to really see if you want, uh, obviously, to continue on and embark on that particular industry. We talked about the employment outcomes. We know that Chantel has got a job lined up. Uh, we know that Danielle and Chelsea have actually uh, been hired on because of how um, their final grades and just the type of individuals they were and what a great fit they were not only in the program, but now into our college uh, as employees. What I want to do right now is just open to the audience. And before I do that, wanted to thank Sunny, Oscar, Amber, Chantel, Danielle, Chelsea, as well as our IT team in the background, making sure everything is good to go for their support. Um, we have gone over a little bit of time, but it's great because we would rather give you more than uh, more information than than not. There was a couple of questions that were in the chat that I like to address. Uh, one question was, what are few examples of companies that hire our grads? And that is a great question. One of the things that I can say is it's difficult for us predicated upon how the geographic displacement of our campuses are. So depending upon which campus you go to, each particular campus will actually have partnerships that they've created in their geographic location. For example, if you attend Victoria, we have a campus at Victoria, Nanaimo, Kelowna, Kamloops, obviously New Westminster, downtown Vancouver, East Vancouver. Each of those particular campuses will have, with their employment service specialist that I mentioned earlier in the webinar, partnerships with particular businesses that we will then reach out to and place you in. Another question that was in the chat was, it, quote, if I am right out of high school and have experience working, can I still get hired in a management position after taking the BAM program? Okay, so this is a common question that often, often gets asked. One thing that I can share with you is that in order for you to become a manager of a particular company, you usually have to start at the entry level. In order to lead those individuals in a company, it's important for you to understand the company from the ground up. It is very rare unless you have someone in your family that is part of the company that you are going to be hired immediately to lead individuals in that company. And remember the term that I'm using is lead. You have to understand that you have to add credibility 
to your position. And if you just come in right away thinking that you've now finished your diploma with our, our college and you should be hired as a manager because you've taken the managerial leadership courses, well, we're going to tell you that the likelihood of that happening is going to be very slim to none. But what we can guarantee you is that you will have the appropriate exposure in the curriculum that will allow you to quickly move up from entry level positions into a managerial position and or obviously be placed in the pool of potential managers that the company is looking for. Okay. Um, one other question that came into the chat that sparked it was- Also too, sorry, if I can just add to that as well. Yeah, of course. Sometimes a lot of companies want you to start at the bottom because they want you to learn their company. They want you to learn the fundamentals. They want to learn how, how their company particularly works. And a lot of companies will hire at an entry level because they want to mold somebody and teach them and bring them up to how they would like them in their company, which really bodes well for a lot of people because they think that they can just walk into a manager experience job without any experience. And it's one of the things that you get the most experience working hands-on at an entry level because you're seeing how it works at the very bottom. And when you work up those different levels, those different tiers, you build on the experience that you've gotten through school. You actually put what you've learned to the test, but the company is actually investing in you and teaching you how they would like them, how you to be and perceive the job to be. So you actually build those managerial skills as you move up through the company with that corporate ladder. Yeah, you got it, Daniel. And you know, the key word in that is understanding the culture. If you're going to be a manager, you need to understand the culture and the team that you've uh, obviously are going to be leading. One other and question. Add, oh, yeah, sorry, say, to add to that too, that's what will make you a valuable manager to be able to go through that experience and work with the people that you'll at one point manage that's what will make you valuable and respected by the people you're going to manage. To walk right into a manager position, you may even end up with a hard time getting respect from the people you're going to manage because you don't know it as well as they do. So starting from the ground up is really one of the best ways to go. Yeah, excellent. Yep. And, and to add to that, like Chantal said before earlier, having that qualification improves your chances way more than not having that qualification at all. Because when people are looking at your records, they have no idea what what abilities you have or what experience you have. At least this is a passport, you know, to enter into that that interview hall. Yep. Um, to the audience, uh, if there are, we're coming to a close right now. If there are any questions, don't hesitate to place them in the chat right now. One question that came up was, what is the next start date for the business programs, uh, Chelsea? I'm going to ask you if you can uh, give us some insight into that. So most of our programs, like Robert did say, they do start on a monthly base every four weeks. Most campuses do start. So the fastest way to get started is obviously looking at our website. There is an inquiry now section. So you inquire now, then one of our lovely team members would reach out to you and help you with the next steps. Excellent. So guys, it doesn't look like there's too many questions that are coming through. It seems that we have been able to uh, hit all of the areas. Oh, we've got one more. Uh, that's it. Okay. What I want to do is um, just close the the webinar right now. Just going through, starting with Danielle. Danielle, any last thoughts for any particular uh, potential students or the audience that are watching right now in terms of um, why they should be embarking into business programs? Uh, honestly, it's Bradshaw changed my life. I wish I could go back to school and take my program over again because I had such a good time. But taking the business program, it actually, I touched on every single point of customer service, HR, digital marketing, um, again, career and course development and all that kind of stuff. And it actually really helped me get my foot in the door with a business and it, I could really go to any other business that I want to because I have accounting experience as well. And I use every single part of my program and business in the job that I do today. And what it helped me do is it helped me basically get my foot in the door and to grow. And again, if I'm looking for a management position, I'm starting at the bottom and I'm working my way up as well. Um, so anyone who's looking at taking a business course, I think it's great. You can definitely take the business course and branch off into something else that you love as well. You don't have to actually stick with, um, specifically stick with business. You can go move into accounting. You can move into bookkeeping. You can go into digital marketing, even if you started just taking a customer service course. So hopefully that helps. 
Perfect. Chantal, any, anything to, to give to our audience and those that are listening now? Um, this was a really easy process. Uh, the Nanaimo campus really made, facilitated it in a great way that um, it wasn't lengthy to figure out when I started or what my courses were. It flowed in a very logical manner as well, which was great. Um, I know that with the four weeks, everybody starts maybe a little differently, but the process to start was really easy and it doesn't matter how old you are. Like I said, we've got people in my classes that haven't been to school in 30 years and it's fantastic. And so, yeah, if you're even a young person, these courses will teach you almost just how to be an adult. It teaches you your communication in your regular conversation with regular people to professionals. Um, this is a really great opportunity, I think, to just start your professional career and see where you want to go. Excellent. Thank you. Chelsea. So what I really liked about my course and my overall experience with Sprout Shaw, I've been to other universities and I had no support. Sprout Shaw gave me that support, that sense of community. And I was able to feel like I was actually going to be successful. You know, they helped boost my confidence. I had great instructors who supported me when I needed to be there. Fortunately, I had a wonderful director as well who, you know, kept me Ooh, what? motivated <laughs> to keep going in my education goals. Like, I remember one day even going up to him and saying, I want my master's all of a sudden from being a person that hated school, never wanted to go to post-secondary, dipping in and out, but Sprout Shaw literally helped me find myself and give me that confidence. So that's what I really enjoyed. And I wasn't just fresh out of high school. I had about almost nine years of life experience. So yeah, I'm a young adult, but I'm not necessarily fresh out of high school. So it was nice to find people kind of in my own scope with me. So I love Sprout Shaw. It was the best school I ever went to and keep going to. Thanks, Chelsea. Amber, any last thoughts for our audience that are listening in? Um, I just want to add that um, going back to school, I was extremely nervous. I didn't know what to expect and being on the doing it um, online um, I was nervous about always kind of being looked at, like, you know, like being like on camera. Um, but Sprout Shaw made it so easy to get signed up, um, help me with the student loan application, just every step of the way, any questions I had, I, I got a quick answer and just made me feel at ease. And just all the instructors are so helpful and all the students, everyone's so friendly and it's just was just such a great experience. And I would recommend Sprout Shaw to anyone. Uh, I, I just think it's it's so great. And they just like, like Chantel said, I've got I've had people in my class who are fresh out of high school to people who are probably in their 50s and 60s. And it's just it's for everyone. And I just think it's I can't say enough good things about it. Awesome. Thanks, Amber. From the perspective of our instructors, Oscar, any thoughts to our audience in closing here? Um, 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 what Amber said, uh, one of the, uh, let's say, one of the positive things that I have encountered uh, because of COVID and that we had to move to this online learning environment is that it has opened the classroom to a lot of diversity. And like Amber mentioned, we have students from different backgrounds, not just cultural, but also um, fresh out of high school, um, people who are transitioning to a, to a new career, people who are retraining themselves. So that has, uh, from my perspective, I, I believe that it has enriched the classroom with different experiences, especially in the business courses. Because that way you you have other you have the students sharing their those experiences with the rest of the classroom, including us as instructors. Because uh, in that way we 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 uh, at least I as an instructor I I learn something new every every single day when I'm teaching. Okay, so that just because we're instructors doesn't mean that we have to know everything. And 
um, opening our minds and opening our our eyes to new um, to new experiences. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it to me it's been it's been great so far. Excellent, thank you. And Sunny, last but not least, any thoughts to our audience? Yeah, I like that that idea. Of, you know, we are students all the time. Instructors are 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 the people who who keep learning all the time. In fact, sometimes I introduce myself as just another student to my students. You know, and then it's really great that we learn from that diversity. I I once had a student from Europe in this COVID period, right? He she was planning to immigrate to Canada and she joined this course and I was so surprised. Wow, you're logging in from Europe. And then I started finding such students, right? You know, people from India and all that you know, coming into our class. So that's one great thing. Formal education is more important today than before because nowadays everybody can get all kinds of information from the web and everything, but then it's not structured, right? So a lot of people will think that okay why should i why should i have this formal learning and formal education because companies you know they have no way of finding you know whether whether you are credible your credibility uh, or, or whether your knowledge is real things like that when you go into a college you're one thing you're forcing yourself you know into the class and then you're sitting there and you're focusing and then there is there are other people who are kind of okay you have to finish this assignment by tomorrow you have no other go so under that pressure you learn it and you learn and you achieve something so these are all the signals that you're giving to an employer here's a person who could go through a course and then pass so he has got perseverance she has got perseverance you know and then she would she should know something because she did a, a systematic course and she did a diverse range of courses so naturally you stand a better chance of uh, in in the job market Excellent. So to our audience, uh, panel members, thank you for attending. Just want to let our audience know that we have a very user friendly website at www.sprottshaw.com. That is S P R O T T S H A W.com. We have Chelsea Smith actually on standby right now in the web team, waiting for any inquiries that may come through. Our toll free number is located on the website. Uh, and if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our web team. They are on standby, specifically Chelsea, waiting for those calls uh, and or email inquiries. To our audience, we appreciate your time. To the panel members, thank you kindly for your time as well. Guys, have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye.